Talk to me about tech specifically, though, because that's where I think a lot of people's focus is right now, given the losing streak that we had, the little bit of a bounce today, if it means anything of a reversal for this space. Look, I think one of the thank you so much for having me, by the way, as always. Uh, I think one of the issues that we face is we're stock pickers. We're talking to companies on a daily basis. And what we're hearing is one company after another where fundamentals are deteriorating. I mean, if you take the software sp sector as an example, we're seeing slowing decision cycles and slowing IT spend. Uh, and, and that's particularly the case for companies with large European businesses. I mean, just in the last week, you've had MongoDB, o Okta, AI, Palantir, UiPath, all either missing, guiding down, or both. Uh, and so, you know, the forward prospects for growth in, in a number of these sectors are not good. The same is the true. The same is true in uh, uh, in a lot of pockets of uh, semiconductors. Yeah, you know, a lot of these companies have taken very significant pricing because of all the shortages that have taken place, uh, given the impacts of the pandemic, and are at peak margins with inventories also very high, and the demand picture starting to look south. So, despite the fact that prices have come down and the markets obviously pulled back substantially, I, I think the issue is. Uh, the ability to rally around companies where the fundamentals have bottomed uh, because it, it seems like numbers in general in tech are headed more downward than they are upward. Okay, so given that's your view, and I think it sets up what I wanted to do uh, during our, our conversation today, I want you to listen to what Glenn Kacher uh, told me a couple of weeks ago. He's a noted tech investor from out on the, the West Coast from Light Street, um, mm -hmm. owns a lot of the enterprise software names that were in the crosshairs. A lot of them have come down, as you said, quite a bit. But here's what he told me, and I want your reaction to it on the other side. This seems like a, you know incredible buying opportunity for our industry. And um, so we're incredibly positive, and, and we, we like the portfolio that we have built uh, to come out of the, the current environment that we're in right now. We're kind of bouncing along a bottom here and uh, expect that ultimately when uh, investors decide to come back and take position, more positions in this sector, that we're in the right stocks that are going to benefit greatest from, from that, uh, that re-rating. Why doesn't that make sense? So I think one of the issues has to do with valuation. The other has to do with numbers. If you look at uh, multiples that, uh, the, that software stocks have traded at in terms of EV to revenue, you saw in 2017 stocks in the highest growth bucket, so it, it, the company's growing in excess of 30 uh, percent, trading at, call it, six to seven times revenue. That peaked uh, last October, November, up at 40 times revenue. And we're back down to uh, down a lot, right? So we're down, call it, 10 to 12 times revenue. But, you know, who's to say that we're not going back to 2017? There are macroeconomic forces at play here that are impacting demand. I mean, you guys have talked a lot about that, so I, I won't get into it. But as demand goes down, uh, you, you know, companies are going to be missing numbers. And it's very difficult for multiples to be expanding in an environment where companies are missing numbers. All of that being said, uh, we do have a number of investments uh, in the software sector that we're very excited about. We, we we're currently have a significant position in 5.9, which I believe we talked about on, on your show. Uh, we also have a, 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 a sizable position that we've been building recently uh, in a company called Bill.com, which is one of the leaders in the uh, uh, in the payments space. And, and, and it's an accounting software, bill pay, invoicing. Uh, th there's a huge pocket of, 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 of credit card companies out there that are, are servicing small and medium-sized businesses. And, and, and what these guys are doing is they're coming in, they're replacing the credit card, and they're augmenting that with bill pay and with invoicing and centralizing uh, accounting for small businesses. And they're taking share like crazy. I mean, they've got 150,000 customers right now. They're growing their transaction value over 50 percent, their revenue over 100 percent. Uh, and we like that one a lot. It's down significantly year to date and, and from its pre-pandemic peak.